Welcome back. On Friday, President Donald Trump signing an executive order banning citizens of seven countries from entering the United States for the next 90 days. Here to discuss more is Michael Wildes, Melania Trump's former immigration lawyer and managing partner at Wildes and Weinberg. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. My pleasure. It's actually Michael Wildes. Thank you for hosting me. Yeah, yeah, we love it. To have you on. So let's just talk through exactly what this executive order means, how long this ban is going to last. And really, we know that it's affecting seven countries and people are calling it the so called Muslim ban. But is this really a constitutional? I don't believe that it's constitutional for a myriad of reasons. I think the president is genuinely inclined to make us safe. But with Saudi Arabia being off the list, there were 16 of the 19 hijackers. Uh, from that nation and over 11 million people here unlawfully with proof positive that ISIS had set itself up throughout our nation. I've represented a score of defectors and cooperators and diplomats that have again uh, turned state's evidence and we know that they're rooted within our states. Why would we target people? Why would we do it this way? Article 3 of the president's executive order targets aliens from when it says the aliens from those seven nations, it does give no, it gives no exception uh, to dual nationals. We have icons of industry who are Canadian and they were also born in Iran. I have a Yemeni Jewish student who attends a university client of ours that was fearful that he won't get into the United States. We have an Iranian surgeon, a cancer doctor who travels the world who was approved for a green card a few weeks ago doesn't have his credential and can't come in. So the, this, I think, while well-intended, is unconstitutional and is really uh, needs a lot of work. It needs a complete haircut. Congress has created the vacuum for our president to act. He's acting on campaign promises that he swore, and again, I believe that he's genuinely inclined. The judiciary has always deferred itself to these matters to Congress and for political question. And it's really up to our elected officials. And in many ways, I'm very disappointed. The deafening silence from Washington has been a poor reflection. And this president, despite uh, how it looks, I believe is genuinely inclined. Michael, over the weekend, um, federal judges in three separate states issued rulings that blocked the deportation of those detained at airports. All three of those rulings, though, did differ. Do you expect that we might see more of those going forward? There are a lot of moving parts here. Um, thank God our founding fathers uh, placed the checks and balances here. This is now in federal court in Brooklyn. I'm a former federal prosecutor. I served in the civil division that will be handling that matter. Immigration is a civil remedy. No! It's in uh, the president's offices. You have three or four different agencies from Homeland Security, State Department, and Customs and Border Patrol that are affecting on this. And of course, you have detention centers and all kinds of other uh, collateral issues. Listen, fundamentally, I'm a business immigration law professor at Cardoza Law School. I'm also a second uh, generation immigration lawyer. My father took on the Nixon administration when he had to fight to give John Lennon a green card. Nixon wanted him out for political question. I don't believe that our president here is doing this for politics. I believe he's sincere. But the statute is very clear. There is no entitlement for foreign nationals to come to America. They have to earn that privilege. There is an, a, uh, a presumption of an immigrant intent imbued in the law. So it's up to people to show that they've earned it. Now, we've been attacked by foreign nationals. And the, this president, to his credit, does not want to be politically correct with the gun faced to America's head. But that doesn't mean that we lose our moral compass. Our founding fathers fought pirates on the high seas. And then, but they didn't stop taking refugees. The president's executive order halts the taking of all refugees. Why would we have our children see our president and our nation stop taking on those needy, tired people, the one with Lady Liberty, but a few miles from where I'm sitting at this Skype? Why would we want to remember that when we took out a band of robbers or burglars or pirates, that we lost the moral compass and the special DNA? Immigration is a huge entrepreneurial spirit to our nation. And if we don't get this right, the next generation will, will, will not take to heart the right example of how to lead. And I believe the president, again, is genuinely inclined and just needs to make sure that he has Congress by his side, that he has the agencies. 
You can't do this with warning to people, but it has to be done more constitutionally with proper due process, with proper equal protection. Even though equal protection may not attach outside of the confines of the United States, we are, again, the world's cop, and people are watching what we do with our hands, not what we say. Right, Mike. Well, I'm just going to push back a little bit on the constitutionality of it all, just because we know that Trump did tab a former New York City mayor, Rudy Giuliani, who, of course, as we know, served as the vice chairman of his transition team, to actually put a group together to come up with a law or with this ban that would help even going Giuliani going on Fox this week and saying, hey, we focused on danger instead of religion. That's how we really came up with this. It wasn't about Muslims. It was about danger. To your point earlier, you said, hey, the U.S. has to find a way to do this if they feel like they have a gun to their head and figure it out a constitutional way. But according to Giuliani, who Trump singled out to put this together, he's saying, hey, I sat down with different representatives, expert attorneys, people I'm sure on your, of your same caliber to come up with this ban. I think it's disingenuous for two reasons. Number one, it was Mayor Giuliani who really established the notion of a sanctuary city where immigrants would be able to cooperate with law enforcement and they would have a proper airing of the issues in that community and great intelligence being evolved out of it rather than the dispute that we see on that issue. On this issue, it just doesn't make sense, I'm afraid. I don't get it. We're going to restrict people from seven countries, but again, Saudi Arabia and hotbeds of other areas, Pakistan and so forth, and the 11 million people that were here. It seems a more comprehensive approach, a more substantive approach to not only shut down the entirety of those that would put us at risk, but to put a plan into place to deal with the 11 million people that are here. Otherwise, again, let's look what they did. Forget what they're saying, because a lot cannot be... Uh, taken to heart because of political expediency. They're restricting seven nations, and they're trying to give a, a, a focus on Jews and Christians having a better shot at political asylum. But instead, they have just about every major Jewish organization and Christian organization discouraged by the way they're doing it. I can't imagine, as an observant Jew myself, that this is the proper example of how we lead as a cop going to take three people, beat them up, and say to everybody else in the world, this is what's going to happen to you if you do anything to us? Is that what they're trying to do? That's not, the, that's not leadership. That's bullyship. Michael, for now, the U.S. can admit individuals on a case-by-case -case basis. How do, they determine, how do they determine which cases are okay and which cases are not? And how do you see that evolving going forward? Very good question. Uh, the executive order restricts people from certain countries. But, you know, that means green card holders, green card holders who are either three years away from citizenship if they're married to a citizen or five years if they got a green card based on employment. They're reversing the status and the benefits of permanent residents by putting this through the scrutiny. Now, a green card holder could always be deported at law until they're a citizen. But we're going backwards. We're in 2017. In the last 100 years and the 200 years, practically, we've effectively put away with slavery, with discrimination, and we've surmounted just about everything from allowing gay marriages and have taken great strides in the way we treat the dignity of people. Right now, we're going back to the 1940s, where we're going to ask things that we never had the right to ask or had the audacity to ask, and that is, where are you from? The next question is going to be, what religion are you? By selecting seven countries like this, They've made just about every Buddhist, Jew, Muslim, and Christian embarrassed. And that is just unconscionable. Now, I believe, again, truthfully, that the president and his uh, crew are genuinely inclined, but they had been better off had they done this holistically with just about every country and putting in restrictions that are empirical, that are objective, and do not call into question somebody's religion exclusively, which this seems to do. Mind you, from a biblical point of view, Mrs. Trump, I compare it to the modern day Queen Esther. She has the ear of the president and she was an immigrant herself. She travailed the immigration legally by getting professional work visas, attaining a green card based on her own independent extraordinary achievements and then U.S. citizenship. This journey Mr. Trump has respected in all of his businesses through the years. And I believe, again, that we have to get back towards creating greater metrics for us to create avenues to have foreign students stay here, to right our economic ship through the entrepreneurial spirit, that very special DNA of immigration, 
and make sure that we aren't embarrassing ourselves or shooting ourselves in the foot so that 12 different agencies look like the Keystone Cops on a Friday to a Sunday. Right, Michael, let me just ask you really quickly, with the seven country ban, that's 90 days, refugees ban for 120 days, what happens when the time frame is up? That's a good question. Stay tuned to a movie theater near you. Now, on the Syrian uh, issue, I, you know, I, I, maybe I understand that a little bit. He shut it down completely because there isn't a single document that you can get out of there genuinely. So how do you vet somebody if they don't have the right credentials? Well, let me just say this. I personally helped get refugee status for the gentleman who saved Marcus Luttrell. Marcus Luttrell was the Navy SEAL that was extracted and the movie Lone Survivor happened. It took two years to get a hero who saved a hero out of harm's way into the United States. I have another client who was here on DACA, Deferred Action, who was attacked by a terrorist where somebody was screaming Allah Akbar and tried to stab his, uh, chop his head off. And he now is having a U visa handled by the immigration authorities in, in exchange for his cooperation against this terrorist in um, Virginia. The truth is we have a lot of challenges within the homeland that we need to deal with. By focusing on seven countries, we really look embarrassed and embarrassing when we have the back door open and the front door is pointed only to one neighbor. All Let's right. do this properly. Let's do this as our founding fathers would expect us to do it. Michael Wilds, uh, former immigration attorney for Melania Trump and managing partner at Wilds and Weinberg, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.